Lift up the word, light up the world. Good afternoon and welcome to Courthouse Square, the National Day of Prayer for this Thursday, May 2nd, 2024. This is Bill Nance from Faith and Friends Radio. He's very pleased to be back to MC again this year. And in the next hour, we will hear prayers for our area, our community, our nation, our world, and we need it more than ever. For our prayer of invocation today, Pastor Ed Harvey. praise you and we glorify your name. We thank you, Father God, that you have allowed us to assemble here today to give you thanks, to give you praise, Father God, for the nation that we live in, Father God, for the things that you have provided for us in this nation. But we pray, Father God, not only for our, for our country, but for the whole world, that, Father God, that your Holy Spirit might take control, Father God, that your Holy Spirit, O oh God, might open the eyes of all the people of the world, Father God, and might cause them, Father God, to understand that you are God and they are not themselves, Father God. So again, Father, we just uh, give you all the thanks. We give you all the praise. We pray, Father God, that uh, you would uh, touch the hearts of our children, Father God, and allow them, Father God, to be raised up into places, Father God, that it will be pleasing to you, Father God, that it will be glorifying to your name. So, Father, we thank you for the people who have come today to share in this National Day of Prayer celebration, Father. So we give you thanks, Father God, and for, for all the things that all the prayers that we're going to pray today, we pray, Father God, that you might know that we trust in you in every one of them, that we're asking you, Father God, to help us, to show us, to teach us, Father God, the way to go. So we give you thanks today, Father. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And now would you stand, please, for the presentation of colors from the Belmont NJROTC Color Guard, then the Pledge of Allegiance led by retired Colonel Joseph Koenig, and the National Anthem led by Dayton Christian Resounding Joy Choir Dayton Christian School. Follow me in giving the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, 
beautifully sung, beautifully done. Well, when did all this start? A National Day of Prayer. It was back in 1952 on July 4th that President Harry Truman issued a declaration for a National Day of Prayer every year. It was 1988 when Ronald Reagan deemed the first Thursday of May as a National Day of Prayer. Now, this doesn't mean we just pray once a year and that's it. Uh, God tells us to pray without ceasing so we can have our National Day of Prayer in our own lives each and every day, really moment by moment. Today, we pray for various areas that we all need prayer for. First of all, today, prayer for repentance, Father Wayne McNamara. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed in thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. Forgive us who bear the name of Christ for these personal and corporate sins. And as we read each one, there will be a slight pause at the end. Let us say together, we confess to you, O Lord. Our failure to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love one another as you have loved us, we confess to you, O Lord, our idolatry and spiritual adultery. We confess to you, O Lord, our failure to give honor to whom honor is due. We confess to you, O Lord, our hands stained with the innocent blood of millions of unborn children. We confess to you, O Lord, our sexual impurity adultery and unjust divorce, we confess to you, O Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites, envy, greed, and our exploitation of others, we confess to you, O Lord. Our deceitfulness in relationships and dishonesty in daily life, we confess to you, O Lord. Our abiding anger, bitterness, and unforgiveness in our relationships, we confess to you, O Lord. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice, we confess to you, O Lord. Our neglect of your word, prayer, and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us, we confess to you, O Lord. Father, make us deeply sensible of the great evil of these things and work in us in hearty contrition. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. With pity, behold the sorrow of our hearts and mercifully forgive the sins of your people. O Son of David, have mercy upon us. Turn from us those evils we most justly have deserved and grant that in all our trouble, we may put our whole trust and confidence in your mercy and evermore serve you in holiness and pureness of living. Amen. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolations of his Holy Spirit. Amen. You've probably heard it. You may know it by heart. That is 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, here's the great promise, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And prayer today for government with Bishop Charles Foster.
I'm standing in today for Bishop Charles Foster. Just want to let you know he's in the hospital today. He's suffering blood clots in his lung. So we put his name out to you today that when you take time to offer your prayer to the Lord, would you please mention Bishop Charles Foster's name. We are to pray today for our government, for our judicial system, our executive branch, and even for our local government, our mayors and our commissioners, the governor, the president, all of the different agencies that reach out to us in our hour of need, our first responders that come at that time when that 911 call is made. And we ask that you continue to lift them up and call their names in your prayers also. Our Heavenly Father, we come right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We're not going to try to call names of individuals, but Lord, you know all of the agencies that you have ordained in your word. Well, you said in your word today, Lord, that the government shall be up on his shoulders. We come today to lift you up, knowing and realizing that all of our help and all of our strength comes from thee and thee alone. Use these men and women that have been elected and appointed to different agencies uh, for we may be able to do as it's been said before uh, government of the people by the people and for the people shall not perish from this earth uh, we thank you for them lord uh, all of those that have committed their lives uh, for these hours of commitment and service uh, to us today lord uh, we ask that you would move on them right now and have your way Lord Jesus have your way we thank you for Lord blessing us so we may be able to look to thee the author and finisher of our faith thank you for helping us to be able to reach out our helping hand to one another in our hour of need we praise you for it right now help us Lord to be able one day uh, to be able to hear your voice uh, say well done well done good and faithful servant enter now into the joys of the Lord bless our government bless the individuals they're serving let them do it with love and compassion and Lord through it all we want you to get all the praise and all the glory is thine and thine alone. These blessings we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. A prayer for biblical unity will be offered now by Pastor Caleb Ingram. What a beautiful day. Let's start by just giving God some praise. How about that? It is such an incredible honor to share this platform with these men and women of God. And so let's also praise God for his faithfulness through them. So I have the opportunity to pray for a biblical unity, to see the church, the body of Christ united in him. And so we're so glad that all of you are here, whether you came for this prayer gathering, if you came for some delicious food, and you're in line. And we have all seen the brokenness and the pain that is in the world around us. And we believe that God has invited us, his church, his bride, to be a source of united hope and healing. So let's pray for that now, that we would be united in Christ. Father, we thank you so much for what you have done on the cross. Jesus, thank you for paying it all for us, that we have a way to find freedom and peace. And it is truly in you, Jesus, that we are united as your body, as your bride. 
Father, thank you that every one of us that's sitting on this platform or sitting out in the sun or under the trees, that we can look to one place that we have found freedom and we have found salvation, and that is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And so we thank you through that one man for bringing salvation. We thank you for that one spirit, one Holy Spirit, that you have filled us, that you have empowered us, that you have strengthened us, that you have called us. And so, Lord, we ask now that in a world that, that needs to see hope and healing and unity, Father, we confess that in many times throughout history and in our present day, that as your bride, we have not been united in you, that we have become distracted, that we have made other things idols, that we have had political idols and denominational idols and idols of pride. The list is long of the ways that we have taken our eyes off of you, Lord. And so we confess that in this moment, and we ask that you would fix our eyes on you, Lord Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, the only one who can call us together and keep us together both now and forevermore. So, Father, we pray that as we go forward from here, that what is happening now in this place would be an example, would be a prophetic example of unity under Jesus Christ. And, Lord, let us not forget it next month. Let us not forget it through election seasons. Let us not forget it when things are difficult. Let us continue to live, to contend for this unity in Jesus Christ. Father, we love you. Thank you for this work that only you can do in us. So hold us and keep us together in you until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. amen. We'll hear now from vocalist Marluda Correll. Her song she's going to do is Thanks to You. And if you have the program, the words are printed inside. So if you want, you can sing along. Marluda Correll. Wow, do we have so much to be thankful for. I would like to invite everyone right now, if you have breath, Scripture says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I think I see everybody breathing pretty good right now, so please join me. And this song simply says, it's not a song about God, it's a song to God. And it simply says, thanks to you. Let your heart sing, and if you want to try to sing along with me the words, please do so. heartbeat and each time that I breathe for everyone I know and all the love shown thanks to you for drying our tears removing our fears the strength that's given with the challenge of living thanks to you sing it with me thanks to Thanks to you, in all things I give. Thanks, thanks to you, thanks to you, Lord. In all things I give, thanks to you. For eyes that open and your words spoken, forgiveness of sin, your spirit within. Thanks to you for who you are and the beauty of stars, for the hope of heaven, now knowing your presence. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. In all things I give thanks, thanks to you. Thanks to you, in all things I give. Thanks, thanks to you, thanks to you, in all things I give. Thanks, Lord, thanks to you, thanks to you, in all things I give. Thanks to you. Prayer is not just asking, but it's also thanking. So 
to the Lord, we give thanks for a boatload of blessings each and every day. Prayer for the church now. Here's Pat Murray. You know, it's a, it's a big job the church has. And we need God's help. Can you give me a good amen? amen? Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so we're not holding the fort, we're storming the gates. Give me again a, another amen. And so let's pray not only for the church, and there's so many different things that the Bible says to pray with regard to the way that the church works, not only of, about what he does internally, but how the church works to win the world for Jesus. And so let's pray both inside and outside. Can we pray together? Yeah. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that the church was your idea. And Master, you said that you were going to build your church. And we're praying today, Father, that there would be not only a grace and anointing for those who have received that grace to be thankful. For those, Lord, who, who thoroughly understand what you had to do for us to get the sin of, and its dominion off of our lives and to put freedom back in its place. Lord, you made us new creatures in Christ. Old things passed away and all things became new. And Lord, of all people, we should be most grateful and most evangelistic to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those, Lord, who are just as bound as we were. And now, Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the grace of God that not only sanctifies your church and helps us, Lord, to cling to you and to the Word of God and be filled with the Holy Spirit so that, Lord God, we might be a witness unto you. Lord God, here we are asking, Father God, in unity as the body of Christ and shepherds and leaders across the city. And we just boldly declare, Lord God, that Dayton, Ohio belongs to Jesus Christ. And Lord, we, your agency, your ambassadors that you have set in this city, Lord, by proximity, Lord, we want to answer the call. To, Lord, to declare the good news wherever it finds a place to land, Lord, I thank you that you'll save people. From the uttermost to the guttermost, we're praying, Lord, for an awakening to take place in Montgomery County and around the Miami Valley. Father, we're praying today that compassion would be the leading edge of every life, that you would take criticism out of our hearts. Rather, Lord God, put the power of the love of God in. And that, Heavenly Father, we would find not only the philosophy of love, but Lord God, the actions of compassion. That Lord, we would move towards those who need the gospel the most. Lord, make our church services not Lord, a, a museum for the saints, make them a hospital for the hurting. And Father, we're asking today that Lord God, you would fill us with fresh fullness of the Holy Spirit. That what happened in fear before the resurrection came out in boldness after the resurrection that there was a mighty boldness of spirit that came upon the people of God. And Lord, we're praying not only for the Montgomery County and the Miami Valley, but Father, we're praying that a revival and awakening would take place from coast to coast and from border to border. That around this nation, Lord, there would be a mighty awakening that would take place. That Father, you'd fill pastors in their pulpits with the Holy Ghost. And that Father God, that there would be a move of the Holy Spirit, an awakening that would take place. Lord, we pray towards the harvest in the young and in the old, that, Lord God, there would be an awakening and an awareness that would come. And in Jesus' name, Father God, we thank you, thank you, thank you, that the gospel is still the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it. And so, Lord, anoint us now with fresh anointing. Let this day be a reset for the body of Christ. We'll give you all the thanks and praise for it in Jesus' name. And everyone said... To pray with us for the family is Pastor Jordan Hansen. Jesus said in Matthew 19, 5 through 6, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. 
Jesus' own definition for families and the foundation, therefore, let's pray for families. Father, we thank you that we have such a gift in being able to marry partners who will partner with us, not just for our own discipleship and become like Christ, but to build something together. And God, this is a mandate that comes from the Garden of Eden. And it, Lord, it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. And Lord, you called a man and a woman to be together and to produce a family and to have dominion over the earth. And Lord, you still call us to come together and to have dominion over the earth, to have babies and to raise up kids. And there is a huge gift in children. Lord, every child is a gift, but it also is a responsibility to raise up our kids to know Jesus. And so, Father, we pray for not only Dayton families, but families all over this country who may not even realize it, but they have a calling and a responsibility on their life. They don't own their families. They don't own their wives. They don't own their kids. They owe you a responsibility to serve their wives like you sacrificed your life for the church. And they have a responsibility to you to steward the raising of their kids to know you, Jesus, at the earliest possible moment to be a model of Christ's likeness for them and to raise their kids up to know you, to be like you, to serve you, and to represent you on this earth. And so, Lord, we pray that you would give us grace and mercy because it is hard raising kids in today's world. Lord, we pray that you would protect families and that you would help churches minister to families, that you would give dads and moms the ability to discern what is a priority and what is not a priority, what will last for eternity and what will not last for eternity, so that our kids will not grow up without a faith and they'll have all sorts of hobbies but no relationship with Jesus. I pray that you would give us the capacity and the blessing and the mercy and the grace and the favor to be able to raise our families to know who you are. And I pray that you would transform society through the families, Lord, that know you, serve you, and love you. We pray that you would continue to do that in every church in Dayton and do that across this land. God, men and women who will raise their families to have values and to have a relationship with you that will last for eternity and will impact those who don't know you. We pray for the next generation of kids who don't come from families that know you. Lord, that the church would raise up spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers to bring in kids, Lord, who don't know you or have an opportunity to have a relationship with you. And we are so grateful for the lineage of Jesus, Lord, and all the controversy that was in there. God, you use broken people and you break cycles and you raise up moments where, God, where revival breaks into family lines and cycles are broken forever. And we pray that that would continue to happen, Lord, for those in this city that have no connection to someone who is a man or a woman of God, but Lord, that they would find Christ in their local church and be mentored into what it means to have a relationship with you. Jesus, we thank you for families. We ask that you would protect families, and we ask that you would help families to flourish in their relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. A prayer for national security will now be offered by Pastor Rennes Bowers. Good afternoon. The Bible says some boast in chariots and some in horses, but we will boast in the name of the Lord our God. I thank God for the American military that is equal to none. Uh, it just surpasses in power and strength, and they keep us safe from foreign adversaries. I thank God for law enforcement, uh, sheriff's departments and police departments and fire departments that come to our rescue in time of need. But it, security is an illusion apart from righteousness. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. America is a nation that has departed from the living God. I want to read you a prayer from 1607, April 29th, 1607, of Robert Hunt, a pilgrim who came, a Puritan who came from England and planted a cross at Cape Henry at the mouth of the James River in 1607. And here is his prayer, the first Protestant prayer ever offered in North America. We do hereby dedicate this land and ourselves to reach the people within these shores with the gospel of Jesus Christ 
and to raise up godly generations after us, and with these generations take the kingdom of God to all the earth. May this covenant of dedication remain to all generations as long as this earth remains. And may this land, along with England, be evangelist to all the world. May all who see this cross remember what we have done here, and may those who come here to inhabit join us in this covenant and in this most noble work that the Holy Scriptures may be fulfilled. Revisionist historians would tell us that God had no hand in the founding of our country. This is 13 years before the landing in Plymouth. But today, America is in trouble. 90% of American children no longer attend church. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. How will they have faith to believe? Our Father in heaven, we look around at these chaotic times in which we live. And we ask that you give us the ability to live by faith and not by sight. Help us to remember, Lord, that you are on the throne and that you are in control. Help us to remember that the Lord Jesus Christ, through his life, death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and soon coming return, has conquered sin and evil and death. Help us to remember that the Lord Jesus is exalted to your right hand, Holy Father, and is ruling from heaven. Lord Jesus, you have all authority in heaven and earth. We thank you for your love and patience and long suffering with us and with the American church. We ask that you send revival, Lord, for surely revival is the only hope of America. We've witnessed revival in times past and the thousands, tens of thousands that have come to faith in Jesus as a result of the mighty moving of the Holy Spirit. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would move again across our land to bring millions to a born-again experience in our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, forgive us as a nation for squandering all the wonderful opportunities you've given us to spread the gospel to the very ends of the earth. Thank you, Lord, that you're ruling and reigning, and Lord, our dependence is solely on you. You are our security, and every other form of security is just an illusion. So, Lord, thank you for this country. Thank you for the privilege of being born in America. Thank you for the privilege of living in America and serving you in this great country. But, Lord, we're, we're in dire straits. How desperately we need a spirit of repentance to come across America. Lord, drive us to our knees. Thank you that revival is coming. Our hope is solely in our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray all this in his holy name. Amen. Amen. Minister Valerie Betts will share a song now. You know, this time of day, we generally are eating lunch, and we are nourishing our bodies physically. Today, we're being nourished spiritually, and what a fresh blessing that is. Amen. Minister Valerie Betts with King of Glory. Lyrics are in the program. Good afternoon, everyone. You know, the Word of God tells us that there will come a day... The Word of God tells us that there is going to come a day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Well, the song that I'm about to sing is encouraging us to do that right now. Don't wait for the day, but to celebrate Jesus Christ right now. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Won't you join me? Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord God, strong and mighty. The Lord God, mighty in battle. Hallelujah. Yes, the world is going to bow down and say, you are God. Every man will bow. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you.
Yes, the world, yes, the world, it's going to bow down. Bow down and say you are God. And every man is going to bow down. Bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? We can praise you now. In victory. King of glory. Fill this place. I just want to be with you. Oh, yeah. I just want to be. I really like the theme for this year's National Day of Prayer. It's on the front of your uh, program. Lift up the word, light up the world. Lift up the word, light up the world. Eight words that says so much. And to pray for something that so many people all around us need desperately, a, pa a prayer of salvation, Pastor Dan Brown. It was just mentioned to us that we look to the word of God. We asked that he would be honored, his word would be honored, that would be lifted up. This morning when I was looking at the national news, I learned that today is a celebration of a translation of the Bible that many of you are familiar with. Before he died, William Tyndale, who was being martyred, prayed, open up the eyes of the King of England. And God opened his eyes. And in 1611, the King James translation became available, much used from Tyndale's version. And today we celebrate an anniversary of that very event on May 2nd, uh, May 2nd, today in 2024, we say, God, thank you for your word that you have given to us, that today we have it. 
I counted one time in my library, my library, I had 23 different Bibles, all of them available that I could read and know about our Lord. Today is a celebration day for me. I do not know how I came across this, but I have in my hand a copy of a little transfer that somebody in my home bought on May 2nd, 1965. That happened to be the day I went to church as a 15-year-old boy and God got a hold of my life and I am different today since then. I hold this in my hand. Today is a spiritual birthday for me. It's tore off at 11 o'clock. I was in church at 11 o'clock on May 2nd, 1965, and I walked out different. And I want to say to you that there is power that God can change a person's life. And this may be a sports a quote, but I want you to know that from that day, if you would have asked me, does anybody have it any better than me? I would say nobody has it any better than me. God is the one who changes our life. But what is unique about this, I had been in church three weeks at that point. Easter Sunday, the next Sunday, and May 2nd. And the only reason I did not get saved and come to God on Easter, the only reason I didn't come to God on the last Sunday in April of that year, but I came on May 2nd, is that no one invited me to come. I was invited on the third Sunday when they said, would anybody like to come to Jesus and I said, I do. And I came and went to God. I came to God and God changed my life. He pulled me. I couldn't help but come. But I want to say this today before I pray. I want to give you an invitation. Maybe no one's ever done that. Maybe no one has said, come to God. I want you to know that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The words of the thief on the cross would be enough. Lord, remember me. The words of the publican that just smote his, smote his breast and said, Lord, have mercy on me. God is here to offer salvation. And I invite you to come to him on May 2nd, 2024. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, that you, Lord, pull us to you, that you have sent your son to seek and to save that which was lost. I was lost, and you found me, Lord. God, I didn't find you. You found me, God, and you drew me to yourself, God. I stand here today, God, because of what you did, God, on May 2nd, 2000, in, 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 in 1965, Lord. I thank you. I thank you, God. And I pray, Lord, right now, knowing, God, that we are not worthy. The thief had wasted his life and was dying and had nothing to offer you, Lord, but you forgave him and said those wonderful words, today you will be with me in paradise. The publican walked away, you said, justified. Zacchaeus, who had climbed a tree to see you, when, when he experienced you, salvation had come to his house. I pray today that someone under the sound of our voices that have been interceding for our nation. I pray that they would open their heart and that you would pull them, that they would sense that what's going on inside of them right now is you. You are inviting them and you are saying, whosoever will may come. You don't have to make yourself better. You can't make yourself better. He will forgive you 
and he will do that right now. And I pray that his people would humble their hearts and just say, God, help me. I know, I know, I know, I know you will forgive anyone. You are the God who gives grace. You are the God who gives mercy. And so, God, we ask today and we thank you today, Lord, that you have provided forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray this. And we can say amen, amen, amen and amen. What a powerful story. What a powerful story. Somebody here today needed to hear that story. At Faith and Friends Radio, we're recording this for broadcast this evening from 6 until 7. And this rally downtown here at Courthouse Square will reach many more people in our community and around the world being broadcast this evening at 6 p.m. at faithandfriendsradio.com. We use a slogan at Faith and Friends, Eternity Matters. Two words. Two words that mean everything. Eternity Matters. For our closing in benediction today, Pastor Robert Jackson. Thank you, Bill. We want to thank each and every one that have taken time out of your busy schedule to come and sit in this hot sunshine, praise the Lord, and hear all these prayers that's been offered up. We thank all of our participants that have come forward this day. And our coordinator, Pastor Scott Davison, we want to acknowledge him today. Pastor Davison, would you stand, kind sir? <laughs> Amen. Amen. With all of the uh, city gates uh, members, would you guys stand for a moment so that everyone can put an eyeball on you? Amen. All of our city gates participants. Amen. And if you notice, we have we have some tables out there and those are prayer tables. If you stand in the need of prayer, we ask you to stop by either one of those tables. And those that are there will pray with you to ask God's richest blessings to be upon each and every one. We thank God for another privilege, another opportunity to be able to serve our community, taking time for this national day of prayer. But as it's been said, this is not just a one day event because the word of God says that man and woman ought to always pray. And not faint. Amen. So as we leave from here, take these prayers with you and keep on lifting up the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God bless you. God keep you. We thank God for each and every one. All of those back there in the back, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for being here. And we ask God's richest blessings upon each and every one of you. Continue to pray and lift up the name of Jesus. If you're able, we ask that you would stand as we give our benediction. And I would want to, I'd be amiss if I didn't mention the name of our overseer and our founder, Bishop Truman L. Martin, our bishop and overseer. We thank God that God put that seed in his heart many, many years ago, and we're still going strong. Now, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for another occasion that you have afforded us this great privilege of assembling ourselves together in your holy and divine name. Continue to bless each and every one that have attended, those that even just walked through, and just heard a word, Lord, and just taken it with them back to their jobs or wherever. We thank you and we praise you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, henceforth and forever. Let all the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs>